The human brain is the most complex thing in the known universe. But as trainers, we don't always appreciate how much new information it can absorb at one time. Long-term memory is almost unlimited in its capacity, but working memory, that's the part we consciously think with and what you're using now, is very limited and can be as little as four new items at one time. Although working memory is small, it does have two channels by which it can process information, language and images. If we meaningfully employ both of these routes in learning, we know it results in an increase in processing capacity among learners. It's a little like using our hands for a practical task. We can achieve more if we use both. I'm employing both routes of your working memory now by talking and showing you this visual analogy of road tunnels. In the 1990s, the notion of visual learners and auditory or kinesthetic learners appeared. But in 2004, a wide-ranging UK inquiry carried out by Sir Frank Caulfield found this theory to be unreliable, and although it's still occasionally heard, the idea now resides outside of academic literature. We are all able to learn through the visual medium, but the key point is that images should be educationally purposeful. Simply showing a relevant picture would not necessarily help. In 2005, I carried out research in which I showed groups of NHS managers presentations supported by either text-based slides or images. The images were relevant to the topic but had no educational function. I asked participants how highly they rated the visual aids and tested their retention 10 days later. The groups that saw images rated the visual aids much more highly than those who had text support. However, when I tested their retention 10 days later, there was no significant difference. Somewhat worryingly, for those who deliver mandatory training, neither group recalled anything significant about the topic. The importance of using visual support that is educationally functional is illustrated by a practice employed by some American lawyers, who have been found to deliberately use PowerPoint in courtrooms in order to fill the processing capacity of jurors with irrelevant items, and thus disable their working memory and their ability to engage critically with the evidence. This effect is not limited to unscrupulous lawyers. Ironically, some well-meaning trainers and lecturers also do it, albeit unknowingly, by presenting text slides while they speak, thereby forcing two forms of content simultaneously through one route. Similarly, e-learning designers sometimes present spoken narration with on-screen text. It's like texting while driving. Our limited working memory won't allow us to do both properly. An important point within the dual route principle is that imagery can be just as effective as images for learning. In the study I mentioned earlier, some respondents from the image groups described a slide which I hadn't shown. I had in fact told a short story and they had produced an image in their own minds which they later recalled as a picture they'd seen. This links with what we know from functional MRI scans used in research that similar parts of the brain are employed if we imagine an image as when we see a scene. If we construct an image in our minds, it's often more lasting, a phenomenon known as the imagination effect. In 2010, I compared four different visual modes in support of a learning session about the values of an NHS trust. Groups comprised mixed grades and professions and saw either Images which were educationally purposeful, brief text of five words or less, traditional text summaries of 40 to 60 words, or guided imagery in which they were asked to imagine clinical situations. Significant differences were recorded both in appreciation and recall 14 days later. The guided imagery and purposeful images were found to be more highly rated and produce more lasting learning after 14 days. A surprising and disappointing finding of my research has been that many teachers, trainers and lecturers have received no tuition in the educationally functional use of the visual medium. Some have received guidance in the functionality of PowerPoint, others in creating aesthetically pleasing visual design, but few in the UK receive guidance in the cognitive benefits of task-appropriate images and imagery. This course aims to resolve this.